Welcome back to the bigger picture. Reaction to raise, Mary, in three, two. So you told us about your health concerns, but in your hundreds of emails to us, you wanted answers to something Health Canada wasn't giving you until we came calling. Our Alison Bushnick tracked down our health minister to find out what the government is doing to protect us. I have 400 emails from Canadians saying that they're getting sick from these bulbs. They just want to know that their government is looking into the issue. What can I tell them? Well, I will look into that. I've been in this job for two months, so um, I'm not aware of the study. We wanted answers about the compact fluorescent light bulbs some people say are making them sick. We went straight to the top to Canada's health minister, Leona Gluka. So why do you think Canada has spoken to I will look into it for you and get back to you. Thank you. Do you think she might be willing to put labels on these? And it was this conversation after months of requests that finally led us to some answers to serious questions people have been asking. People like Luann Jacklich. Okay. Good girl. Luann may save animals people discard, but it was her own health that was suffering. Just felt kind of punked out, uh, nauseous and some dizzy spells. I'd find myself sort of blinking to focus my eyes. And I said to my husband, I said, oh, I'm getting dizzy. I'll be standing doing something in the barn and I, I start to get dizzy. Then she saw our story on the bulbs. She decided to remove them. It was so dramatic and it was so quick. The other symptoms were gone in a matter of days. I think that it, it had to have been the bulbs because once they were gone, everything else was gone too. That's it. They're all gone. Honey. They're all gone. Then there's Rose Morris and all that scratching. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm a mess. I'm basically covered in hives and skin problems, the itchiness, and it's been hell. Rose has lupus. British government health authorities tested the bulbs. They tell us people like Rose are more sensitive to the ultraviolet radiation the bulbs give off. These aren't immensely hazardous levels, but they were a surprise to us, and they shouldn't emit UV. It's very frustrating because, you know, my doctor, sees, he didn't know anything about uh, the light bulbs until I told him. He was shocked. And there are extreme cases like this one. Brenda Ryder says she only sat beside a bulb for a few minutes when this happened. I was just completely aghast. So why do the bulbs emit UV? We asked scientist David Sugarman to explain it. It has mercury vapor in it and it's the mercury vapor that gets excited when, it, when the, an electric current passes through and when the mercury vapor gets excited and goes back to being not excited, it gives off a little bit of ultraviolet light. That's what excites the coating and makes it give off light. And those long tubes do as well. All fluorescent bulbs give off a certain amount of ultraviolet radiation. But British health officials say the problem with the curly bulbs in UV may be how close we get to them. They recommend these cover types that you can buy in Canada, or to stay one foot away for one hour. People can actually get quite close to them for hours, and they may not be aware of the UV um, output, and therefore they might get some skin reddening. So these are the bulbs we took out, and now I really don't know what to do with them. And that's a good question for all homeowners. You can't just toss these in the garbage because the bulbs have some mercury in them and they may end up in the landfill. So they have to come here to a special facility who can handle the mercury. And have you seen this? It's a long list from the federal government of what to do if one breaks in your house. Mercury is a neurotoxin, so you really don't want to be exposed to this stuff. So what's in the bulbs that may make people sick? And were they tested before they entered our homes? For months, we've been trying to get an on-camera interview with Health Canada to answer some of these questions. For this story, they had agreed to go on camera, but then postponed. Then we met the health minister. 24 hours later, we finally got that interview with Health Canada. This is Robert Bradley director of Health Canada's Consumer and Clinical Radiation Protection Bureau. Our recommendations will be based on what the results are, and certainly if, if there is cause for concern, uh, one way or the other, we will certainly act on it. But we need, we need the information to determine what, 
what sort of recommendations to make. Health Canada is now testing the bulbs, testing for two things, UV and radio frequencies, or RF. You see on the box it says the bulbs could interfere with radios, televisions, even remote controls. Just watch as this epidemiologist tests the bulbs with a simple radio. And I hate the, the thought that pretty soon the only bulbs you can get are these, because if the radio can hear it, your body can hear it. It's pressing the body too. I will look into it for you and get back. Thank you. Health Canada will be investigating RF. After meeting the health minister, one day later, she did look into the curly bulbs and told us in a statement, the health and safety of Canadians is the utmost importance to this government. Health Canada has initiated a study to measure UV emissions and electromagnetic field exposure levels from compact fluorescent lamps. Results are expected by fall of 2009. The companies that make the bulbs say they're safe and meet industry standards. We contacted the big three manufacturers and their lighting association. They all declined an on-camera interview. Compact fluorescent light bulbs are becoming more popular because they save energy and the old inefficient bulbs like incandescents are being banned in Canada in 2012. You're looking at the bulb of the future, LED, light emitting diodes, no mercury, no health concerns, but for now, hard to find and expensive. From light bulbs to clothing, everyday items are being put under the microscope. In another investigative report, we put Canadian clothes to the test to see if cancer-causing chemicals are part of your wardrobe. Visit our website. Our scientists show you what not to wear. Coming up next week on 16 by 9. A young Canadian filmmaker was living his dream, traveling the world and videotaping his exciting life until something horrible happened. It's the courageous and heart-wrenching story of Dan Northcott. I had so many plans for the future. It's not a fear of death that keeps me wanting to live. It's, it, 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 it's what's ahead. That's coming up next week on 16 by 9. And that's it for us tonight. If you have a story idea, just call us at 1-877-TELL-69 or log on to 16by9.com. You can also send us a video message through Facebook or YouTube. I'm Mary Garofalo. Thank you so much for watching. And from all of us here, good night. Our final word tonight goes to our 16 by 9 viewers. Your episode tonight on CanCon seemed very one-sided and liberal in its approach to criminals and criminal activity. Shows that only provide one side of the story aren't news. They're just liberal marketing. 16 by 9, the bigger picture. That's a wrap.